This is Hazel. And I have a mustache. And now I don't have a mustache. Today we're going to be playing Terraria. Master mode. As an ultimate display of my Terraria abilities. As you can see, it makes bosses and regular enemies much harder. It took me 40 hours to get into hardcore mode, which is the second phase of the game. 40 hours. It's a long time. Most of this challenge is being done with my best friend, Diego. So let's get into it. Hey, it's me again, but with a different shirt. Uh, so a few heads up. One, Diego's mic didn't work for like 90% of the first part of the game, but eventually we figured it out and got it working. Two, I get most of my videos as an export directly from my PS4, but some of them just straight up didn't export. So footage from beating the B-Boss, uh, yeah, none of that really transferred. And then a lot of my dungeon exploring and farm location setups, they didn't do it either, so. I was really excited to show you guys a lot of that footage, but it's okay. I mean, I got like so much footage to edit through, so I hope you like it. Neon shoes, we're going with it. I made a character and then I loaded up a master difficulty world, which ironically had the name Lake of Beheadings. The name was ironic and funny enough for me to keep. Let's get it, baby! All right, I don't remember how to play. And that much became obvious as I died to a slime just seconds later. Oh, I'm gonna get taken out. Yeah. Killed by a slime. With the newfound knowledge that I was completely out of my depth, I skipped on making a house and just dove straight into exploring a cave nearby. I'm not saying it's a bad thing though, because I did find Hermes boots, as well as an umbrella to help with fall damage and quite a few ores, and also some grenades, which end up being my weapon of choice for a little bit of this. He's stun locked. He's stun locked. Yeah, let's get it, baby. This weapon did basically nothing to the enemies, which have a larger health pool now, so I knew I'd need an upgrade pretty soon which is where the grenades come in. You see, I, I didn't have a steady supply at this point, but I did have the few, which let me know just how good these were compared to these enemies in pre-hardcore mode. I mean, range and damage, are you kidding me? I kept mining ores and looking for treasure, but it wasn't long before I got put in my place yet again. No! Why is there so many of them? Why is there so many of them? Oh, look at that speed. Oh, that speed, oh my gosh. Sadly, that speed wasn't enough to make up for my horrible decision of not making a house, which really started to catch up with me. Stop. Oh my gosh, dude. Let's team up. Why is there so many? Oh god. Screw we're running. We're running for it. Sorry, Brett. Nope. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, man. Come on. After reaching the day's quota of humiliation, I uh, decided to finally build the house. I decided to build it around this pretty tree I found at spawn. Why are you running from me, you coward? I cut down some trees and began the gruelingly hard work. Oh no. It was a mistake, I swear. Stop. Oh my gosh. It's been ages since I've played, so there was a few mechanics I didn't remember. Why is this... What? That's not a mechanic that was there last time I played. Dude, I don't know what's happening. And also some mechanics I'm just dumb for not remembering. Do I have to break this food with a pickaxe? Are you kidding? What? That's me. As with any good build, I knew it was going to be a minute before it started to look good, but with a little bit of effort and time, it started to get somewhere at least, and it was keeping mobs out, which was good. Death is upon you, my friend. Oh, 
Oh, I was so close. Oh, he was one shot. The house was really coming together, but there was a lot of issues yet to be solved and a lot of problems I hadn't really fixed yet with the house. But before long, I had my room and six other rooms finished and almost completely furbished. These top two rooms get their own chest, and the one on the left becomes pretty important because it holds the seeds and the plants. Now, that room was going to go to the dryad, but these plants and seeds become pretty useful eventually whenever I find out that you can only really beat bosses in this game mode if you use potions. So, yeah, it's pretty important. And say hello to the shark pup. Uh, don't get too attached, though, because he's not around for long. So after I finished my room and placed a furnace, I realized a major problem with my house. Because there's no background where the tree was, mobs can just spawn there. It's pretty obvious why that's a problem, but it's a pretty easy fix that I can solve later. I got back to exploring and found a life crystal, which I immediately used for obvious reasons. Ah, just look at that umbrella usage. Anyways, I uh, went exploring and I stumbled upon a jungle where I was put to shame immediately, like... Not even a few steps into the jungle. In my shame, I retreated back to the cave where I found a life crystal, mined some ore, mined some more ore, and got murked by a ghost. That's the first time I've seen one of those, but it's not going to be the last. Desperate for more loot, I ended up back in the jungle where I found some shoe spikes, uh, some ore, and lots of potions. As well as two statues, which I immediately went back to my house and placed because it's a frog statue, why would I not? A really big theme in this build ends up being statues, especially because in master mode, every boss drops their own unique statue. That's kind of like a extra reward for beating them on the hardest difficulty. While exploring the jungle, I found a magic mirror, which is essential, and I could finally get rid of those recall potions. But the jungle is dangerous, and while cautious, moving slowly and making sure to place plenty of torches and stopping so I can hit things from a distance, it still wasn't enough, and eventually I got taken out. And that was just the beginning of a very long, very long streak of bad luck. <laughs> so much bad luck that I couldn't even include all the deaths because I'm trying to cut it down to at least 20 minutes. And on top of that bad luck, there was bad decision making. And I ended up selling a lot of the stuff I could have used so I could start my useless yo-yo arc. Are yo-yos a decent weapon? Sure, I'll admit that. But I spent a lot of gold getting a bunch of different things I didn't even need for a weapon that I ended up not using that much. I then found some crimson ore, which I can't mine yet, but at least I had it on my map to get later. And I then found the first of many, many mushroom biomes. Like many, like we have so many on this map, it's unbelievable. Remember that little problem I had with the walls in the background behind the tree? Well, that problem was starting to bite me in the butt again. And again, so I'm gonna go fix it. Wood walls are good for a lot of these background areas, you know, like the little halls between the rooms, but that tree area really needs some glass, a lot of glass. So I went out to get it. In case you couldn't tell, this is all in times 10 speed because it took forever. But overall, I'm proud of the outcome. And if you're worried about that little uh, area on the left side that's not even, don't worry, it gets fixed eventually. I'm sorry for the wait. But it, it was bugging me too. It bugged me too. The house still isn't done, and it still had flaws, as you'll see later, and as you can probably tell by the gaping hole in the roof, but we'll come to that later. I then began working on what would be the angler's house, which is where I encountered my first blood moon of the playthrough. I pretty much just locked myself in and used the yo-yo until morning, and I finished the house. And in the end, it looked, it looked decent. It looked alright, but it ends up changing later, you'll see. At this point... My friend Diego had joined me, and we were going to go through all this suffering together. Magic weapon that I come encountered with. Oh, Jesus. Dude, that literally, that's that sums up this entire experience. Yep, there we go. Yeah, the same exact fate. I caught him up on a few things, like the usefulness of grenades. And then we decided we'd head out to go try and get to the ice biomes. More crystal hearts there. 
Nice armor, my guy. I was told that the bottom two rooms weren't suitable because they weren't big enough, so I had to do a little bit of renovating before we left. Let's scramble. Come on now, my guy. Put some oomph into it. Put some oomph into it. Hey. Once again, grenades come in clutch to show they are a supreme early game weapon. Jesus. Thank God for grenades. All right, I'll be hiding inside the street. There's a living tree down here. I found. Literally just now. I'll be waiting here for you. There wasn't much in the tree, just some tungsten and some recall potions for Diego. Yo, yo! I'm being bamboozled! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh god, he's after me! Dude, this is horrifying. Dude, I've never come to face to face with something that's so aggressive and so small and murked me instantly. He didn't even drop anything. Oh shoot, that's true. Dude, if it's crimson, we're done for. Oh no. We gotta get through here as soon as possible. Oh no! It's a face monster. <laughs> oh my gosh. He didn't even wait. <laughs> yes, sir. Ouch. No, no. Oh god. Oh god. As you'll soon see, we were fools. We were victims of our own misinformation. There was hardly any crystal hearts in here. It was almost completely a waste of time, but we did get a lot of ores and some crystal hearts, yes. I found one. I found one. Does Tuxton armor have- Oh, that's a nice bat! What's hitting me? What's hitting me? Do I have- Oh, dude, he's doing so much damage! No, no, no. You stay out there. No. Think about what you've done. Okay, okay. I need blocks in my inventory because... I'm gonna have to block off a lot of stuff, obviously. I am at one heart. Dude, there's so many ice bats. Oh my gosh. Let me get more grenades, because obviously those are just like the top tier weapon right now. Alright, I got you, I got you. Oh, it's plunky. Oh, plus 8% damage though. Here you go. I found this ore vein, a specific ore vein. I doubt it'll be enough to make anything significant, but it is a very important ore. I think I might have enough iron to make an iron pickaxe, which should be able to help me get it. But I'm not entirely sure if I have enough. Or, or even if an iron pickaxe will do the deed. Ah, I was stuck underneath some rocks. Oh my gosh. Oh, never mind. I don't got you. Okay, almost there. Almost there. Okay, I can see enemies down there. So, you're, they're getting uh, grenaded. How is it not dead yet? No? Are you kidding me? So 40% pickaxe power still isn't enough. That's insane. Yeah, that's right. All that effort and time, and we didn't even have the pickaxe that was able to break that ore in the first place. Yeah. Very useful. Very useful. Oh, it's, oh, that's three piranhas! Dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No! 
Ooh, are you kidding me? Another? Dude, this is insane. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Apparently, yes. And now they're coming towards me. Gosh, dude. We're gonna make it here. I'll handle two blocks, you handle the other two blocks, okay? So, like, this. Yeah, there we go. The mood was bent, but not broken. We were feeling a little downtrodden, so we just started up the elevator, which is basically a one-stop shop all the way down to the underworld, where we would eventually fight the boss that unlocks the second half, or the second, yeah, basically the second phase of the game. It also helps find a bunch of ore and a bunch of chests you might have missed. Is there a snail? I want it. Like this beautiful snail statue. Ah, oh, heck yeah, baby. Oh my gosh, 78. Oh, you gotta be tugging on my sleeves. Oh, well, I have two sets of almost 99, so... Yeah. Oh, shoot. That's not good. Okay, there you go. Alright. I'm gonna take my side. Why? Why is this happening to me? I've been caught in what I can only assume to be a trap. Whatever, okay. For some reason, I can't jump. That You see that tiny little bit of a, oh, well, I didn't even need to go up anyways. You see that tiny little bit of, uh, like, that puddle over there? Well, you've got double jump, okay. It's not the same. More ore, courtesy of the elevator. Yeah, there's a way bigger hole down it and below it, too. Okay, we're set, we're set. I'm gonna, uh, start working on opening it up. A problem one might encounter while trying to make a road to the underworld is diverting bodies of water. So we spent a lot of time doing that in our journey below. Wow, I've got a lot of stars. I think if you stay on the right, like the very right side, you don't die because there's like a little water on the right. Wait, time out. You're right. I was wrong. That gummit. All right. All right, we're gonna run it back. Let's see. Can we? Yes, we can. 59 can mine meteorite. Rad. At long last, we had a pickaxe that could finally mine that ore we had found. So we went down and got to it. Got one of them. All right, fire. That's 20 more. Oh, I see Tuxton. His mic wasn't working, as I have made you all aware for this part, but he was telling me that there was crimsonite, which is the ore we had found, all over. And so uh, he kept pointing me in the direction, and I'd go get it for him. The ultimate duo, the, the dynamic tag team, if you will. We kept exploring and found more ore. He'd call out where it was and go get me to it, and I would cover the entrance while he did it. Before long, we had enough to be satisfied for a bit, so we headed back up. While in the mushroom biome, I found a suspicious looking eye, which summons the eye of Cthulhu, one of the bosses. I also got a demonic bat bat, which is a, it's better than my sword, so I figured I'd keep it on me. I then also found Hermes boots for Diego, and then this happened. That was a trap chest. Kill him. All right, so. You have any left? No? Okay, here's yours. It's very sad. Oh, wait, here you go also. Here you go also. You don't have one of these. After we split the loot, the useless yo-yo arc came back once again, and we wasted 22 of our perfectly good Remtain ore on yo-yos. All right, I'm going to try and speed run and catch you up on the lore real quick a little bit. Uh, we found the angler. We moved the angler. We found out that the dungeon was in a very horrible spot in the middle of a crimson biome. We went to the jungle. To explore we died in the jungle i went mining i went mining a lot i got curious to see if bombs could destroy the walls next to the brain of cthulhu's hearts
they could. I did that twice, got the Undertaker, which is a gun, and I got a little tiny heart pet. Then I had my first encounter with the Eye of Cthulhu, and here's how that went. Right off the bat, you can see me on the wrong foot using that godforsaken yo-yo, but then I switched up to grenades. Just look at that damage difference, it's insane. No, am I saying that I'm doing good at this point? Absolutely not, but it's better, right? Alright, to save you on all the acne, I'm garbage. I died. After that little disappointment, I uh, went ahead and finished at my house and gave it a nice stone exterior. And then I gave the guide the room directly above mine for easy access. And I know it's like super early game for this, but I got the mushroom biome house ready as well for whenever I need it. Since I found that Undertaker pistol, the gunsmith moved in and I decided it was time to buy a mini shark. I hope you bulletproof for this about to hurt. The goblin army attacked, but I mowed him down with the mini shark. I died a lot. I'm not going to lie. I did die a lot here, but I did get the job done. <laughs> so I figured it was time to try the eye again. I do blame this loss on those stupid zombies that kept stopping me, not gonna lie. Even closer this time. I knew with a little extra push, I could definitely get the job done. So the next day, I hit up Diego, and we got to it.